Euland measured frequencies uh -huh. from the 1934 Rife machine instrument. Okay. Rife Rave number four. Right. Okay, so right there is his fr measured frequency, 1.604. Now, Hoyland was working for Rife at yes. this time, and we can rely on his measurements as being accurate. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, he we're going to see why. All right. Okay, now, his audio frequency mix was 21,275 in a sine wave. See? Mm -hmm. Now, go click on the spectrum analysis, which is the blue picture on the right-hand side. Just click on that one, and it'll open up. And boy, look where that fundamental ends up. See the line drawn? Yeah. That's 1.6 megahertz. Right there in the center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now if we go back, and we're going to show you just how precise this guy was, how close he was. B. coli rod, see, 417 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. There's the audio frequency, 8,200. Now, when you say audio frequency for our listeners, does that mean... That's the audio frequency input. Okay. To drive the gate oscillator that he had made. Okay, I got it. All you right. follow me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, see here, the machine's output frequency is at 3.9 megahertz here. That's on the far right of that second line of yeah, the chart. Yeah, it tells at. you the exact frequency because this was one of my costly experiments, Jeff. And so if we click on that one, on look that at one. all the fundamentals. Hmm. But look what's showing up, where the line, the dotted line is with the star. Huh. See, it could have been any one of these. I see. You follow me? Yeah, how are you going to pick? Yeah, so now we'll go back, and we'll go to his next one, because we just want to prove here that what Hoyland said about the frequencies were correct. All right, the next one is B. coli, a virus. Yeah, so you go click on the, the next spectrum analysis and look what shows up. Huh. He is oh, yeah. damn close each yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. So, with a gated frequency oscillator, Jeff, this would move, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. It would move back and forth and actually cover it. Mm -hmm. Would sweep. Yeah. So any one of these that you click on, and, and, and I want to get to the real important part, but because I know that we don't have much time, but so anyway, they're there for your pleasure. Anybody can view it to prove to themselves that, and, and I did it. I did the experiments because this is the way I had to prove it to myself. So these are the frequencies that Rife was using in 1934, 35. Yeah, the, the Hoyland machine. And these were killing the organisms. Yeah. Now, Rife called uh, a number of things. Well, I don't know if it was a number, but Strepto. Thrix. Yeah. What is Streptothrix? Yeah. Is Streptococcus? Just an, is it a group name for Streptococcus? Yeah. All right. I think. <laughs> okay, but, well, then he had tuberculosis, a frequency for killing that yeah. uh, bacterium. and. Uh, yeah, and then, and just for the, the heck of it here, click on tuberculosis. Okay. Click on the spectrum an analysis. All right. And see, look at that. Mm -hmm. Real close. See the big fundamental? Mm -hmm. Okay, which one was it, see? But look at what shows up from Hoyland's measurement. Right, the dotted line right there is exactly on the frequency. Wow, yeah. So this guy was definitely hiding the frequencies by gating the frequencies. This guy being? Hoyland. The Rife, Rife knew this. Well, or Rife did didn't know it. So how is this? So Hoyland was pulling a fast one on the right for what reason? Well, I'll tell you why. You're going to see here in a second. This doesn't mean Rife wasn't successful with his work. Oh no, no, no. Rife was successful, but yeah. Rife's frequencies, Rife thought, were the fundamental. Ah. Hoyland discovered by working in Rife's lab uh -huh. how to get a whole new set of frequencies that killed him. And these are Hoyland's frequencies. Hmm. And so I decided I got to test this, and this is what I'll do. I'll build this machine, mm -hmm. and I'll put these frequencies.
frequencies in, and I'll modulate it through a gate, which is very hard to do in the AZ-58 because you have to change the circuitry in the cathode of that triode tube. So it's a, it's a difficult thing to do. <laughs> no, no, yeah. But once you do it, mm-hmm. this stuff just, bang, it's right there. Wow. So it's just now, Jeff, this, this is a good point because now the only thing missing with the Fanatron tube is the amount of power that he had. Many of the rife frequencies that we all know, the lay people know about, are in hertz. Yes. Not megahertz, not... Kilohertz. Kilo- okay, there you go. So they're all, they're not megahertz. People need right. to know that. Well, see, if you change, if you divide these by, and you'll find this on Stan Truman's site, mm-hmm. if you divide this frequency by John Crane's formula, mm-hmm. you end up with 2028 for cancer. Hmm. Okay, and I'll show you what happens here. Well, 770, 727, yeah. those are pretty classic. Yeah, those are Hoyland's frequencies, see? Oh. And okay. then we'll go down and we'll we'll show you something here. All right. Be right back with John Fadini. John Bedini, and uh, head on down to the next table. Okay, yeah. Okay, John. Okay, now, what we did in the next table is we used a square wave input. All right? All right. And see, if we go back to back till this X, here's Hoyland's given frequency. Uh-huh. And this is Hoyland's measured frequency. Okay, see, 1934. Through, through a square wave generator, comes out yeah. 21,275 Hertz is the audio frequency. Now, where do you think the two two seven five comes from? John Crane reduced the numbers. Huh. Okay. Now, if you go to the spectrum analysis, you see it's lining up with the square wave. Pretty close. It is. Yes, it is. Seeing what Brett Nichols did here. The, the man that helped me with this, which I have to give him credit for, is he told you the percentage on the side of the chart that it's off. Hmm. You see? Mm-hmm. On all these things. So people can look at these at their leisure. Jeff, what we want to get to is let's explode some viruses. Okay. We're back here. Let's just explode. But let's go down to 11.805. All right. Well, and here. on the left-hand side, 11. Eight of O five. There we go. Now, the AZ fifty eight modulated, mm-hmm. fixed, mm-hmm. modulated. Mm-hmm. The machine now can modulate. You follow me? Right. Where it couldn't do that with what John Crane was building. Mm-hmm. All right. The AZ fifty eight modulated with Hoyland's twenty one two seven five hertz BX frequency. Mm-hmm. The eleven thousand seven hundred eighty hertz, which is eleven megahertz. All right, is dead on, but the machine's carrier frequency must be calibrated exactly to do this. Hmm. 